Joining us now, Jeff Pierce, Senior Manager of Derivatives Trading for Charles Schwab & Co. is here to discuss both Lucid and Rivian. Leadership at Lucid uh, making some comments, it looks like, on LinkedIn. Uh, what's going on there, Jeff? Yeah, we've got the CEO of Lucid uh, going to LinkedIn, as you said, recently discussing how he thinks Lucid continues to outpace Tesla and other EV makers, saying efficiency is of critical importance to making a better, lighter, more spacious, longer-range vehicle, and that directly impacts cost of manufacturing. Therefore, efficiency, efficiency is arguably the single most valid witness of a company's core EV technology capabilities. He looked at uh, the company, he highlighted, I should say, the five mile per kilowatt hour, 146 mile per gallon equivalent that Lucid Air achieves, uh, making it the most cost efficient uh, production car to date, or excuse me, efficient car to date. Rawlinson referred to the chart, which compared several rivals, including the Model S, suggesting it would take eight years for the Model S to reach their current efficiency that Lucid has in their air pure. He said that Lucid has a significant EV technology advantage. If the closest competitor were to continue their rate of progress, it would take them many years to match Lucid today. So some pretty strong words coming from the CEO. I mean, really interesting commentary from the CEO, Jeff. I was shocked the way in which they were like, comparing from a chart of like, like to Tesla. And I, I think just right now you're not in a position to be making these claims. And I mean, I, I seen Lucid vehicles. They're beautiful. They're, they're very cool. And I, I can imagine that as far as like efficiency goes, sure. But I just feel like these, these come at a very interesting time when Lucid stock has gotten killed. And frankly, they're not really a competitor even yet to uh, Tesla. Not really. I think there's a couple angles to this. For one, this is not the first time we've seen Rawlinson, uh, you know, maybe take a poke at Tesla. He formerly worked for them. He was the chief engineer, worked on the Model S himself. Elon uh, and, and Rawlinson have clashed over the years. Um, I think the other thing we can look at from this angle is the technology for Lucid, the differentiating that they're doing might be to try to lead to some more partnerships. We're seeing a lot of names. Uh, like Rivian, you know, m match up with other automakers. This is potentially a way to do that. Honda is, is reportedly considering a partnership with Lucid already. We know they've entered into a partnership with Aston Martin in the past, back in June of 2023. And for a stock that's had a very bumpy year, investors are looking for some relief here. We have seen two consecutive quarters of increases on deliveries, record second quarter uh, vehicle deliveries recently. Uh, but nonetheless, the cash situation at Lucid is not good, and investors have really struggled to, uh, to get behind the stock. Shifting gears here, Jeff, and talking some Rivian, there's some delays, it sounds like they're saying, due to parts shortages and their uh, delivery of these electric commercial vans for Amazon. Look, this is one of those ones where my antennas go up a little bit. Like, is this just the, the letting off Rivian easy? Does Amazon want out of some of this? Or... If it is just simply what is stated here by Bloomberg, it's just a delay, not, not a ton of, a, ton of a harm here. Eventually, these will get delivered. Yeah, that's a good question. I hadn't really thought about it from the Amazon angle. And unfortunately for Rivian, delays are not something new. They, they themselves have had cash issues, but they've seen part shortages along the way. Uh, reportedly, they've halted. Uh, the line in their factory in Normal, Illinois earlier this month. They did not provide a timeline uh, for when they're going to come back. And the Amazon spokesperson told Bloomberg that the company was aware of the production issues and that it was not expected to impact Amazon in any way. Rivian has said uh, that the part shortages are across the board in the industry, uh, although they did not specify specifically what parts are the problem. Um, they did say production of the R1 electric pickup and the SUV models remains unchanged, and all employees will continue to continue to work for their 40 hours week, 40 hour week. So, uh, again, you know, is this a big impact? Is this something, as you pointed out, maybe coming from Amazon? Unsure at this time, but what I do know is, again, it's been a very extremely volatile time for Rivian, even since their second quarter report. Uh, coming into this week, Rivian was up about 40% since late, late June after their deal with Volkswagen. And, uh, you know, not a good time for delays, even though now they've got that excess cash coming in from that deal. Yeah, and I guess, Jeff, this is the nature of growing pains. I mean, this wasn't something that was completely unseen at Tesla, which frankly still has its own fair share of, like, recalls and various delays and, and production woes. So it's not abnormal. It just feels like for a name when you look at the stock and you see – 
where we've fallen, how disappointing this name has been. It's just another layer of like kind of investor mistrust, frankly, in their execution. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this stage, you know, the earnings report was certainly a catalyst for the stock, and we've seen volatility since then. Uh, the production numbers were slightly slowed down. But this stage, earnings aren't as important as sales and costs, right? These delays cost money. The sales are what, uh, you know, investors are looking for. We know they've done a lot to reduce the cost of making the vehicles, including material costs. They've, uh, you know, they put a halt on their construction of their plant in Georgia. That saved them about $2 billion. They're still guiding for about 57,000 EVs by the end of the year. But pickups like these are really a, a big deal for a company like Rivian, who has struggled with cash in the past, sitting at about $7.9 billion in cash. They really needed that funding from their new Volkswagen deal, and that's given investors a little bit of relief. Also, one of their big investors is Amazon, Jeff. So if you upset one of your big investors, not necessarily a good thing either. But like we said, nothing too crazy yet. We'll see where this story develops. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Jeff Pierce, Senior Manager of Derivatives Trading for Charles Schwab.